Hello, welcome to the Monday, February 22nd, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. This weekend was sort of a flashback weekend that featured two diaries about DDE, Dynamic Data Exchange, a technology that has led to exploits, well, back in sort of the early days, as far as I'm concerned, when OS2 was still a competitor for Windows. DDE allows for many of the features that we now have in macros with that malware that takes advantage of DDE is, of course, uh, able to, for example, download and open uh, files uh, from the internet. To the user, DDE actually sort of looks a little bit like macros in the sense that once you open the malicious document, you do have to enable macros in order to allow these DDEs to run. I assume that one reason why hackers uh, tend to occasionally play with these older techniques again is that they hope and, well, sometimes they're right about uh, that, that uh, modern anti-malware may have forgotten a little bit about these old techniques, so it may not detect this as malicious because, after all, there is no macro present. Xavier wrote about this sample on Friday. On Sunday, we do have a sort of a follow-up to this from Didier, where he shows how his OLE dump tool can be used in order to analyze uh, these documents. And researchers at Red Canary, VMware, and Malwarebytes uh, have investigated and uh, documented some interesting Apple malware. And is yet another example of malware that apparently has specifically been compiled for the M1 processor. As so often with Mac malware, it just asks the user to install it. The ruse here apparently appears to be the very common Adobe Flash installer, which we have seen sort of as one of the predominant ways how attackers trick Mac users into installing malware. And I can only hope that with Flash being no longer supported, no longer being used, that uh, this will become less of an issue over time. Sort of interesting here is that uh, the malware actually runs as part of the installer. They're using JavaScript uh, within the installer in order uh, to execute additional code. And then they're just setting up a simple launch daemon that will occasionally check in with a command control server to download additional instructions. At this point, it's not really clear what's the end game here. This appears to be a little bit more of a proof of concept or an initial sort of trial version. Malwarebytes reports it has seen it in numerous systems across their user population, but actually they haven't seen sort of anything done with the command and control channel yet. So again, this doesn't really exploit any vulnerability, nothing that you need to patch. Just don't install these weird Adobe Flash installers or other software that all of a sudden offers itself for installation. And well, typically, if you are typing a URL, uh, you start with a scheme, uh, typically HTTP or HTTPS colon and slash slash. Well, it turns out the double slash is actually strictly not necessary, at least for most uh, browsers. Instead of uh, the double slash, you could as well have a backslash forward slash and looks like fishers are taking advantage of uh, this feature in order to a bypass detection. When your email filter is looking for URLs, they're looking apparently only for properly formed URLs, but the user clicking on one of these malformed URL prefixes, well, the URL will still work the way the Fisher intended it to work, and as such, it can be used to bypass various filters. 
This is a very common theme in security, in particular in intrusion detection, sometimes referred to as the resiliency principle, where receivers of messages are often fairly forgiving as to the actual formatting of the messages. The result being that often things that you don't think work will actually work and can be used to bypass intrusion detection and other detection systems that will ignore these malformations messages. And SonicWall published yet another firmware update for its SMA100 appliances. This appears to be somewhat triggered by the zero day and uh, compromise of SonicWall that we had a couple of months ago. But in itself, this update doesn't fix a vulnerability. It, according to SonicWall, does feature some code hardening fixes as well as sort of a roll up of patches that were released in response to the February 3rd of vulnerability. And well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.